Hey, howdy folks. It's been a little while. I haven't had a whole heck of a lot of time to make videos lately, but a little bit more than two weeks ago, I was scrolling through my GitHub feed and I saw something that I was just really surprised to see and it absolutely made my week a couple weeks ago. And I knew then and there I had to make a video about it. And this is what I ended up seeing. Uh, the release of Astro Query version 0.4.7. Now, this absolutely made my week, and I was really happy and excited about this because I actually contributed a little bit of code about a year ago to Astro Query. And so, uh, with this video, I want to do a little bit of a devlog and uh, talk about the contributions that I made to Astro Query version 0 0.4.7. Uh, but I'll start off more by talking about what Astro Query is. And then I also want to encourage all of you to go ahead and start contributing to open source stuff. And so hopefully with this little story time devlog type of thing, uh, you'll maybe learn a, a little something or two and start contributing yourself to some open source projects like Astro Query or any of the other awesome uh, projects or libraries in the AstroPy project, which by the way is like an awesome astronomy and astrophysics community that I would strongly encourage any of you to contribute to. I mean, so yeah, without further ado, let's talk Astro Query and uh, what I contributed to version 0 0.4.7. Alrighty, so let's start off with what is Astro Query and how I started getting involved uh, in using Astro Query. Okay, so Astro Query is a Python library, a part of the AstroPy project. Yes, you can see here's the AstroPy project. It's a massive uh, astronomy, uh, you know, open source uh, project. And uh, generally speaking, if you're going to be doing anything astronomy or astrophysics related in Python, you're going to use AstroPy uh, or any of the different AstroPy related projects in your code. And so that's exactly my uh, interaction first with AstroPy and then AstroQuery. AstroQuery does almost exactly what the name implies in that it is a library that allows you uh, to really, really simply and easily start querying a whole bunch of different astronomy and astrophysics related uh, databases, catalogs, archives, you name it. If we go over here to the Astro Query documentation, which I'll leave in the description for you, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff right here um, in this documentation, but there's all these available services like Alma, you can go ESA James Webb, ESA Hubble, uh, Gemini, the HESARC, okay, that's mostly what I'm using it for. So some of you might see where I'm going with this in that Astro Query allows you to really simply and easily query some of these things. And for me, doing mostly high energy astronomy and astrophysics, I work a lot with the HESARC. Some of you might be familiar with this open source project I created called Auto Nicer. And um, you don't really need to know too much about it other than it does stuff with Nicer if you're unfamiliar with it. But if we look at the listed dependencies in the Pi Project Toml, uh, you can see right here it requires AstroPy and then also Astro Query. And so just from like working with FITS files and doing a lot of stuff with like time conversions, right, ascension declination, if you're doing any type of imaging stuff, like I, I was pretty familiar with using AstroPy and that's how I quickly found Astro Query uh, to aid me in the creation of the AutoNicer CLI tool. I've done a few videos on the AutoNicer CLI tool that I've created if you're interested in that and you're a nicer analyst. But say, you know, I want to access some of this stuff over here at the HESARC. Well, uh, I'm querying stuff here for the Crab Pulsar or PSR BO531 plus 21. And I could go and I could very simply and easily grab this uh, Nicer Master catalog, just because we're on the topic of Nicer Master. I can grab this whole table just by importing uh, the Astro Query library and using the HESARC module. And I can get this whole response back pretty simply and pretty easily without having to write too much code. I could also go ahead here and like if I want the XTE master catalog, which is like the next catalog I work with the most, um, you know, this might take a minute to load up here just because there's 900 some uh, entries to this table. So I'll give it a second, you know, but if I wanted to get this XTE master catalog here for the Crab Pulsar or the query uh, BO531 plus 21, I could get this entire table right here in a, in a response with Astro Query. And again, I'll refer you over to the documentation here. This is like really simple stuff on how you can just, you know, if from astroquery.hesark, import hesark, and then, you know, just with a couple of lines here, you can start returning these different tables. This is obviously an example here for ROSAT or the, for the ROSAT master catalog. 
And so uh, by using AstroQuery in the development of Auto Nicer, I started to get a little bit more involved with uh, and familiar with AstroQuery. And eventually I went in and started doing some unit testing with Auto Nicer in the development process. And a warning came back one day after upgrading to a new version of AstroPy uh, that basically stated that the response that I was getting back from the HESARC was not in a FITS format. And I did a little bit of digging to see if maybe this was affecting my code. It, it wasn't, so I just went ahead and I made sure that uh, this was a known issue. I looked at the AstroQuery uh, repo on GitHub, and that was kind of like my first time actually even looking at the repo there. And I saw that there was an issue ticket open uh, for the warning that I was getting and that, you know, it was only a couple of days old, so people probably haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it yet. So I just kind of, you know, ignored it, and I just went ahead and suppressed those warnings for my unit tests. Okay, well, fast forward a bunch of months later, and I decided that I wanted to add in reprocessing functionality into AutoNicer, and... I went ahead, upgraded all my dependencies, as you might expect, and went ahead and took a look. And at this point, I knew that this it was an issue with AstroQuery, not AstroPy. And at that point, there wasn't a new version of AstroQuery. I wasn't using like development versions of AstroQuery, which, by the way, if we look in the pyproject.toml here, if you want to use development versions, then you kind of just have to include, you know, this uh, little uh, dev and then whatever uh, number. I don't know if it's the number commit or what it is. But anyways, if you want to use development versions of stuff like AstroQuery, you could go ahead and do that. So anyways, I upgrade all of my dependencies. I run through my unit tests again, um, you know, by adding in the reprocessing functionality just to make sure I'm not breaking things that are, you know, already existing there. And I still get this warning. And I go back to the repo. I see that the issue is still open. There's a pull request for it, but um, it hasn't really been worked on in a few months and the issue and the potential solution has just kind of gone stale. And at this point I said, you know, I I know enough Python. I'm going to try to, you know, contribute to this and try to fix it because it's an open source project after all. Okay. So I uh, forked the repo and cloned it. And very quickly after like a day or two of trying to figure out what the heck this code was doing, I ended up realizing that, Hey, with some of these larger open source projects, like it, they're going to humble you. Okay. They're going to, they're going to humble you because you might think you know how to code, but every single project is different. And unless you have experience working in that project, whether it be a library, a CLI, a GUI, whatever uh, piece of software that might be, there is a learning curve to actually doing development on that particular repo. And so uh, I reached out to a developer friend of mine who had, you know, had a lot more experience than me. And uh, he basically said, just try to contribute something small, like look for a recent open issue that like looks pretty simple or straightforward. Maybe it's an issue with like something in testing. Maybe it's something that's an issue in like documentation. Just try to pick something simple. And so that's the first uh, contribution that I ended up making just because I was familiar with reading through the documentation. And I noticed that there was this issue with documentation uh, testing or doc testing. And so uh, I took a look in trying to figure out what that issue was. So let's take a look at that PR. So here are all the pull requests that I've uh, made and that have been accepted. So there's seven of them. And you can see this first one here is a maintenance for fixing HESARC and IMCCE uh, documentation issues. And what you'll see here from the changes is, you know, there was a discussion of going back and forth and me kind of just trying to figure out stuff of how, you know, like the documentation testing is even working. But most of this was just kind of like copying and pasting in a new table by rerunning the tests and seeing what the expected results would be. Actually, it wasn't even running the tests. It was just, you know, coding this up, seeing what the expected result was and making the necessary changes so that this would pass the documentation tests. And that was actually uh, maybe not the best first issue because it didn't really help me out too much with like the development side of things. But at least it got me familiar with the fact that there is documentation testing, which I you know hadn't really worked with too much before. I thought I knew what I was getting myself into. Turns out I didn't really. But um, it was it was very basic because again I'd worked with the module before with Auto Nicer. Actually, there's another uh, you know uh, little CLI tool that I have that's very similar to Auto Nicer called Auto XTE. It just does Barry Center correcting. You can find it on my GitHub page uh, if you're interested at all. But anyways, um, you know I was familiar with working with AstroQuery, and so uh, I figured, hey, you know, 
maybe like fixing up some uh, the weird issues that are going on with the documentation and the documentation testing would be something straightforward for me to do. But to anybody who's interested in getting involved in open source, this is actually a really good opportunity for me because it, it really doesn't matter how big or small the, your first contribution is. It, you know, you, you probably should try something out a little bit small just because, again, like I said, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And so by dipping my toe into this, it was actually really awesome, though, because in the comments on this PR just for these documentation fixes, I ended up mentioning that I was kind of new here and that I was just trying to, you know, start contributing or whatnot. And one of the maintainers actually, you know, reached out and said, you know, hey, thanks for the PR. And here is an issue that's really suitable to beginners uh, or, or newcomers to the repo. And so that is naturally where I gravitated to next. And that is that uh, you, you can see this issue right here. Many of the functions in Astro Query have like a ton of arguments and a ton of keyword arguments. And one of the really frustrating things in Python sometimes, and I've even seen this in my day job, is that when you have a function with a absolute ton of uh, arguments and keyword arguments, it's really, really easy for you to pass in an argument in for a keyword argument when you just lose track of how many of these different things you're, you're uh, passing in. Like, let me show you an example of one of these Astro Query functions that has just an absolute boatload of arguments and keyword arguments. Okay, so let's take a look at this function that you can see right here just for this function called query. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arguments, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine keyword arguments. It's, again, it's really easy to lose track of what you're whether what you're passing in is a you're passing into an argument or to a keyword argument, and if you don't make the keyword arguments keyword only uh, arguments, you could be passing in values that you think are being passed into arguments, and it could be overriding default values of keyword arguments that you might not want to change. So let me, uh, you know, let's open up a terminal and let me try to create a uh, demonstration of this for those of you who are either aren't versed in Python or, uh, you know, just aren't familiar with, uh, you know, th this thing with keyword arguments in Python. All right, so let's just create a simple function here just called demo. And it's going to accept a uh, argument that is going to be a string, and then uh, a keyword argument that we're going to set equal to b, which by default is going to be cat. And we're just going to have this return an f string with a uh, you know just just these two things together. A and B. Okay, so uh, it's a simple function just in, as an example. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to look at, you know, how this works uh, with the present way that the function is written out. So in the current state of this simple function, uh, B is not a keyword specific, meaning if I want to call this function, so let's just say I say, I, you know, I call demo and I put in uh, dog and then we don't put in anything for B. Okay, we're going to get dog cat out okay pretty simple pretty straightforward but if let's say i want a dog bird what i could do is i could just pass in uh bird as a second value into this and it is going to overwrite our uh keyword argument for b and we're going to get dog bird back out let's say that i want to do dog fish i could also go in here and say fish and I could specify that B is equal to fish, and then we'll get dog fish, okay? That little bit of overriding that B uh, keyword argument can get you into trouble, especially, again, like in larger functions like I saw from before. So to make this function keyword uh, only, what we'll do is I'm going to add in this star into our function right here. And it's going to make it so that our B function right here can only be called when we actually specify that B equals uh, something. So, all right, so we've overwritten our function right there. And now, if we do this from before, we can go uh, demo dog, and we'll still get dog cat like we did from before as expected. But now if we try to go with dog bird, we're going to get this error, and it's going to say that there, it only takes one positional argument, but two were given. 
that's the problem. If we go with our dog fish example where we're specifying that our B keyword argument is equal to fish, now all of a sudden that will work. And so if we want to have it return dog bird, we would have to specify that B is equal to bird. It's kind of a little bit of an annoying thing that Python does, but hopefully you can see how in some of those larger functions, overriding those keyword arguments could be a little bit tricky. And with the way that the entirety of Astro Query is coded up, only a handful of the different functions that were written in there actually uh, had the keyword arguments being keyword only. And uh, through the development experience, the whole reason why this particular issue was opened up is because in several cases, where you're adding new keyword arguments, there's awkwardness, just as you know is stated here in here. And just the developer experience could be a little bit more annoying because you might be thinking you're calling a function or if there's new keyword arguments or whatever being added or new arguments being added, you don't know whether or not those keyword arguments are being overwritten or not. But what I ended up doing is I ended up going through and auditing the entire library, every single module of the library, and looking at every single function that was, uh, you know, that was in the code, and just adding in that little star that I showed you into the function to make those keyword arguments keyword only. That might seem really, really simple and straightforward, but when you're talking about a library with all those different modules and so many different functions that became a little bit of a daunting task because you not only have to figure out, okay, you know, which functions do I need to apply this to? In reality, it's all of them. But in some cases, there were some keyword arguments that were probably more appropriate for, you know, just remaining, uh, you know, being able to be overwritten positionally. There weren't many, but there were some. But then you also have to see where every single one of those functions are being called, not only in the code itself, but then also in the unit tests. Because also, all the unit tests needed to still pass. You can see here that in all my pull requests for Astro Query, again, there's only seven of them, and one of them was merged uh, about 11 months ago. You can see that is through the course of one, two, three, four, you know, five of these uh, pull requests that I ended up closing out this entire issue. You can see one of these pull requests, number uh, 2661, was actually quite a beefier uh, pull request where I made a bunch of different changes to this. And actually, it was kind of cool because one of the maintainers actually, you know, thanked me for, you know, getting this done. It was actually quite an accomplishment. You know, I was just doing this in my spare time, uh, you know, in the evenings. And, you know, I was really happy to contribute. And, you know, again, it took... Um, I started in about December 2022. It went all the way till end of April 2023. But it was it was really an, an accomplishing thing. You know, I felt a real sense of accomplishment once I completed it. It was really awesome because with Astro Query, one of the things that it got me really used to is it got me uh, to work with the entire uh, library. And it got me working with the unit tests. So I got to figure out, you know, how unit testing and everything like that worked. You know, not only did I have the experience with the document testing from before, but I figured out, you know, with Astro Query, that's a little bit weird with it being a, with it being a querying library. And so that was really useful for me, you know, even though it was just kind of like audit, uh, auditing, like tedious kind of work to figure out what was working and what wasn't. It was actually really, really helpful for me because it got me really familiar with how Astro Query kind of works and how, especially how the testing works. And so in the middle of making all these keyword argument changes, one of the maintainers actually suggested that I look at a, another uh, little bit more interesting uh, issue, and it's a broader issue, issue with the package. Um, and so I made one other contribution in here which is for vectorizing queries, which this one's a little bit more of an interesting issue. And you can see that none of these have been checked off yet. And the, the issue is still wide open, although some of these probably might need to be checked off. And for full disclosure, I've only made one contribution to checking something off of that list, which was actually, if we go back to my pull requests here, you can see I did this one uh, pull request kind of in the middle of all these keyword only argument uh, related pull requests for vectorizing some stuff in the NIST. So uh, this is a little bit more of an interesting like development issue, but still not anything super 
uh, super crazy or interesting, but nevertheless, it actually provides a great deal of performance benefits to the Astro Query package. And so what do I mean when I say vectorizing? Let's go to that PR and I'll show you exactly the changes that I made and uh, discuss a little bit about uh, some of the issues going on right now. Uh, maybe not issues necessarily, but uh, like the maintainer said, a pain point with Astro Query uh, that could certainly be improved upon. So here you can see some example code for the NIST module of Astro Query, and uh, you can see that with the changes that I ended up making to this, um, this these are going to help out with uh, querying line names from the NIST. So you know, here's three different line names right here, and you can see they're all in a list or in some type of iterable. So the issue with the library is that if you wanted to query all of those line names, you would have to call that function three different times. There are three different line names in there. You'd have to call it three different times, and you have to have like some type of for loop or something. And you'd have to, you know, again, call that function three times, which would send three different requests over to the NIST and require three different, uh, you know, or three separate responses. And from an overhead perspective, that's not really the most efficient, especially because it's going to put a lot more. Um, you know, work on the server side of stuff to get you back that data that you're looking for. And so um, by being able to vectorize this, then what we can do is we can pass in an iterable with all the different line names that we wanted. Um, and so in that case, there was three of them. We could pass in those three line names and it would return, it would just make one request, return one response with a table that had all of those different uh, line names, uh, you know, like relevant information in there. And I think actually a better way of explaining this would be with the HESARC in particular. Okay, so here uh, from before, we have the XTE master catalog. And let's say I wanted to query this, um, you know, with Astro Query and the HESARC module. You can see that, uh, you know, this is just for a search for uh, PSR BO531 plus 21, but you can see that the target name in some of these is Crab Pulsar, some of them it, it's Crab, for others it's Crab Nebula. Um, you know, let's keep going down and see if we have PSR BO531 plus 21 anywhere in here. It might not be listed out that way. But anyways, the point being is that the crab has all these different aliases or, you know, things related to it. So you've got PSR BO531 plus 21. You've got crab, crab pulsar, crab nebula. You could go with supernova 1054, SN1054. I mean, there's a ton of these different things. So let's say that you wanted to make one blanket query for all these different aliases for the crab um, using the HESARC module. Well, by vectorizing the query... You could pass in an iterable, so it could be a list, it could be a tuple, it could be a column of a table, and or like a distinct column of a table, and you could just have PSR BO531 plus 21, Crab, Crab Pulsar, Crab Nebula, SN1054, you know, all these different aliases for the Crab, and it would make one request out to the HESARC and give one response back. And again, from an overhead perspective, that's putting a lot, of, a hell of a lot less uh, stress on the server because you're only making one request. And so that's basically what I ended up doing with line names for the NIST. And now in 2024, I'm going to be working on trying to get back into uh, contributing to Astro Query because, like I said, I haven't really contributed anything in about 11 months. And that's because I actually was trying to tackle that uh, HESARC issue that I mentioned from before, which kind of even got me to even think about getting involved in contributing to Astro Query. So anyways, those are the changes that I ended up making uh, in Astro Query. Uh, they're, they're in Astro Query version 0.4.7, and it just it, you know it made my week because it's the first uh, larger open source project that I've actually been able to contribute code to an actual uh, you know release of. And you know that makes me really happy. It also just really makes me happy to see version 0.4.7 be released because version 0.4.6 was out for quite a while, and you know I think we needed a, a new version to come up. But really, the whole reason uh, for me to make this is just to document, you know, like my own knowledge for myself or for you, if you know you're maybe interested in any of this type of stuff. But I also want to use it as a way to encourage you or try to encourage you to. Uh, contribute to open source code. You know, I saw something in Astro Query that, you know, was an open issue and decided to kind of tackle it. And, you know, I'm really happy that I did because it allowed me to grow a lot more as a programmer where I'm not really just working on stuff 
for, you know, let's say like an employer or um, a client and where I'm not just working on stuff for myself. You know, I'm working in a larger ecosystem with a lot of really awesome people. I mean, everybody in the Astro Query community uh, or just the AstroPy project is just absolutely awesome. I, you know, I'm so happy to be able to work on things and get feedback from them. You know, as a matter of fact, with the vectorizing pull request, I originally only had it so that it would work with Python lists. And um, one individual, you know, kind of commented and did a code review of it and just said, hey, just make it so it's any type of iterable. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Why did I restrict this stuff to lists? Why didn't I just make it any type of iterable? Because you should be able to pass in any type of iterable. And it's it's little things like that that are just, you know, absolutely awesome. And it, again, it's so awesome to work you know, with the community on some of this stuff. And that's why I want to get back more into it here in 2024. Um, you know, I've been, I haven't contributed anything in 11 months and, you know, that's 11 months too long in my opinion. Um, you know, Astro Query has definitely helped me out quite a lot in all the different uh, little tools that I ended up using. Um, you know, I've, again, I use it in Auto Nicer. I've used it in Auto XTE. You know, if you want to get involved in an open source project, don't be scared to do it. Just understand there's going to be a learning curve. Understand that uh, somebody else's code is their castle. So don't go walking in there and getting everything all muddy. Go in there with an open mind. Understand that, you know, there's going to be a learning curve and you're starting at the very beginning of that learning curve and just allow it to humble you. And in the end, just understand that also you're contributing to something a lot bigger and you're working to make something a lot more awesome as well. So that said, for those of you who are interested in astronomy, astrophysics, that type of stuff, and you're a Python programmer, check out Astro Query. If you're not using it already, I'm sure there's some cool stuff that you could build with it. I have only dipped my toe into the cool stuff that I can build with it also. But with that said, that's the end of this devlog. I promise that more of the math-related content and even the physics and other astrophysics content uh, will come out also. But with that said, I want to thank you all very much for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, don't hesitate to reach out. And I will see you all again, hopefully, next time.